Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to pick number one. We have reached the finale of my favorite 31 hard rock and heavy metal albums of the 70s countdown. 31 days here in the month of July 2023. I've picked out, we've picked out, our 31 favorite hard and heavy albums of the 70s. Today for my number one, it's the fourth studio album by this British band released June 5th 1970 we're going all the way back at the beginning of the decade produced at uh, IBC Delane Leah and Abbey Road Studios in London England produced by the band for Harvest in the UK Warner Brothers here in the States I am talking about In Rock by Deep Purple I know that's not going to surprise many of you I think a lot of you have predicted that I would be picking this uh, the debut studio album from the Mark II era of the band. All right, Not to be confused by the Concerto for Group and Orchestra, which was officially the first ever release, including this lineup, but that really was a live album, right? So here we have the first studio album from the band, and what a first studio album, right? Oh, so good. Richie Blackmore and Guitars, the debut studio debut of Ian Gillen. On vocals, Roger Glover, debut studio album with Deep Purple on bass, John Lord on organ, Ian Pace on drums, the Mark II era of the band, arguably the uh, greatest, most well-known lineup of the band as well. And what a batch of songs. Of course, this, would, this album would take Deep Purple from their very psychedelic pop leanings on those first three albums which are very cool for what they are but this is a completely different beast sounds like a completely different band nick simper and rod price are gone in comes the two new guys in comes a brand new heavy heavy sound one of the origins of what we later called heavy metal with this album and a few others that came out around this time period as well speed king starts it all off with some crazy raucous guitar from Blackmore, feedback and whammy bar, theatrics, all sorts of stuff. Speed King, good golly, said a little Miss Molly, man, that rampage and riff. Speed King is terrific. Speed King sounds nothing like anything they had done before, right? It's like, holy hell. Loud, brash, distorted production on this album. Bloodsucker is up next. Killer. Would there have been a Bloodsucker on any of those th first three albums? I don't think so. Then, of course, Child in Time. Don't, don't, don't. Right? Child in Time. With that little lick, which arguably borrowed from another band. Regardless, it's an amazing epic for the band. It's spooky, it's tranquil, it's angry, loud, and brash, and... An amazing guitar solo from Richie Blackmore. Also, great stuff from John Lord. Legendary Screams from Gillen. Child in Time has been one of my favorite songs for decades. Decades and decades and decades. Love it. Then, of course, you got Flight of the Rat. I mean, side two is so intense. Flight of the Rat into the fire. I mean, more screams from Black from Blackmore from Gillen. Blackmore ain't screaming. He's probably screaming at Gillen, right? He's not screaming at anything else. Uh, into the fire, so heavy. Living Wreck, Hard Loving Man, Hard Loving Man, how about that gallop in that song, right? The debut of the, the heavy metal gallop. And then, of course, the single that came out, recorded at these sessions, not on the original album, but on later reissues, plopped in there, and it fits right on the album. Of course, you got Black Knight, right? Black Knight, terrific song. How about that, how about that riff, man, that lick? amazing this whole album is just so amazing just sounds like a young band ready just to go for it and like they finally have found like their purpose in the music world and you know they would never do another album quite like this fireball has its similar moments but fireball is going off into some different directions and of course machine head as well machine head is you know probably has more legendary songs on it but it's a little more refined than this right but they they were never this loud angry just bludgeoning as they were on this particular record so good all right let's take a look at uh charting position shall we for my number one pick australia number one 
Finland, number nine. Germany, number one. Italy, Sal, number 19. Japan, 68. Of course, they would do much better in Japan shortly thereafter, and this would be the start of uh, Deep Purple's kind of dominance in Japan, right, obviously. Uh, Norway, number five. UK album charts, number four. Only made it up to number 143 on the U.S. Billboard Top 200. And also the Danish charts, number 15. So pretty good, pretty good there. Uh, as far as the single goes, Black Knight made it to number two in the U.K. Number 66 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. And as far as certifications and sales go, Denmark, gold, 25,000 units sold. France, gold, 100,000 units sold. Germany, gold, 250,000 units sold. Italy, gold, 25,000 units sold. In the Netherlands, gold, 50,000 units sold. Sweden, 25,000 units sold. UK, gold, 100,000 units sold. And uh, that's actually of the, the original release, but when they recertified in 1995, another 100,000 units sold at sales since 1995. So all told for the UK, 200,000 copies sold. And in the, here in the States, gold, 500,000 units sold. How about some accolades, right? Kerrang! Magazine in 1989 ranked this at number 15 in the 100 greatest heavy metal albums of all time. Guitarist Magazine in 1994 ranked this number 8 on the top 50 most influential guitar albums of all time. Q Magazine in 1998 ranked this number 48 in the 50 best albums of the 70s. Kerrang! Once again in 2005 ranked this number 56 in the 100 best British rock albums ever. Classic Rock Magazine in 2006 ranked this number 13 in the 100 greatest British rock albums ever. And in 2006, 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die, whatever that is, <laughs> ranked this uh, in their list of um, the 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. No, no actual ranking there, I guess. Um, it was on no particular order, but it was on that list. So, yeah, there's a reason why most people love In Rock, right? There's a reason why I love it. Uh, I've loved this album for a long time. Love the cover. It's just the coolest. It's so heavy. Never gets old. So that's my pick. That's number one for me. My number one favorite hard rock and heavy metal album of the 70s. Deep Purple In Rock. Let us know what you think of In Rock in the comments below as well as your pick for today. Pick number one. This is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So thanks in advance for all that. We've got this brand new psychedelic whale shirt for all of you who love the whale design. Uh, we've got them now in these kind of cool psychedelic colors and all sorts of different colors so if you're not into black and you want blue or red or whatever we've got all that so go down to the link below to our merch page and go check those out and uh these should be very very popular people love the whales so that's do I. and uh what else so starting tomorrow of course tomorrow we're staying in the 70s but we're shifting gears a little bit we're going to talk about our 31 favorite <clears throat> rock pop albums right rock and pop i guess rock albums not again we're not going to duplicate stuff we've already done. So I've already done the Southern Rock, favorite Southern Rock countdown. So all those Southern Rock bands are not going to be included. No Almonds, no Skinner, no ZZ Top, no Marshall Tucker Band, no Outlaws, Blackfoot, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Charlie Daniels, they won't be included. No Progressive Rock, no Yes, ELP, Genesis, Jethro Tull, so on and so forth. No Hard Rock and Metal, no Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. Judas Priest, all the other bands we've talked about here this month, right? So here we're going to talk about those bands that they don't really fit in any other category. It's just general rock. They're not prog. They're not southern rock. They're not hard rock and heavy metal. Some of the albums might be a little, you know, because there's going to be lots of blues rock stuff on my list, right? So blues rock, sometimes the blues rock stuff can get a little hard rocking, right? But but they never call it like hard rock or metal, right? So uh, there's, you know, there's going to be some pop stuff. There's going to be all sorts of things this month. And uh, I have made the decision that no band will repeat this month. Okay, so only one album by any one band or artist. So we're really widening up the playing fields. And it's actually interesting because I think 
as opposed to this month where I could have filled up all 31 slots with five or six bands. It's a little bit different for the general rock one, right? So there were a few artists that I might have had two or three picks possibly, but for the most part, uh, all of them had just one dynamite album that I love so much above and beyond, right? So uh, this was a little bit easier for me to say, okay, we're just going to pick one from each band or artist, right? Because like I said, there was only a couple that might have repeated. So I think this will be fun. I'm still kind of, I think I have my list, but I'm fine tuning it a little bit, but I'll be ready to go tomorrow so i hope you guys are as well so till then uh we'll see you let's see tonight hudson valley squares are back tonight we're going to be talking about our favorite eps of all time right e what's an ep an extended play not quite a full-length album not quite a seven inch right single thing it's an ep maybe three four five six songs tops 20 25 minutes long right maybe a, a new studio track or two and a couple live tracks or so whatever eps our favorite eps we're going to be talking about tonight on the Hudson Valley Squares, of course, we got Wednesday coming up is a new album review day, so should have a bunch of new reviews for you. We've got Thursday is the Monsters Den. Uh, we're going to be talking about some films and we've been watching and buying of late, so it's another one of those kind of catch-up episodes where we don't have a specific topic. Here's some of the cool new things we've been uh, watching and keeping an eye on. So there's that. Friday morning, the Fun House with Martin Popoff on Friday, of course, and then on Sunday, Stephen Reed will be joining me ranking the albums of Pendragon, the great British uh, progressive rock band. So it's coming up on Sunday, Sunday. That's right. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm P. Part. We'll see you real soon here. Thanks for being here all month long on this fun series. But tomorrow begins a new one, as always, right? August 1st, my favorite 31 rock and pop albums of the 70s. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye. Oh, and the full list of all this month will be down below, pinned in the comments. Almost forgot. Bye-bye.